What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Today we're gonna to be talking about nutritional needs for growth and development. Let's get started. So to begin, we're going to be looking at what each age group is going to require in regards to the nutritional intake for growth and development. We begin by looking at our infant. So the American Academy of Pediatric recommends breastfeeding for the first six months of life and breastfeeding with additional foods from age six months to 12 months. Introduction of new foods can begin with one new food every four to seven days apart, so that way it's easy to identify if there's any potential allergies to certain foods. Infants should also not drink cow's milk or ingest honey, corn syrup products due to the risk of botulism toxins before the age of one year. When it comes to our toddler group, appetites begin to develop with more variations in intake. So toddlers are going to need access to an adequate amount of protein as well as vitamins A and C. There is an increased risk for high intake of fats, sugars, and salts related to snack foods. So be very careful in regards to those snack foods. And we also want to promote healthy choices and encourage physical activity. When it comes to our adolescent group, energy needs increase to meet the increased metabolic needs for their growth. So increased requirements of daily protein, calcium for bone growth, and iron to replace menstrual losses for girls and promote muscle development for boys. Increased intake of iodine as well as B-complex vitamins are necessary to support that thyroid development as well as their metabolism. Fast food consumption is common with adolescents and it puts them at an increased risk of developing obesity as well as malnutrition. So be very careful in watching that intake. The onset of eating disorders during this age group is also very common. So you need to really be watching what's going in and what's coming out. When it comes to our young and middle adults, energy needs decrease as that growth period ends. That lack of physical activity, as well as access to certain foods, whether that's our fast food consumption, can increase the risk of this age group developing obesity. When it comes to pregnancy nutritional needs, protein requirements increase at approximately 60 grams per day. Calcium needs increase to promote fetal bone mineralization. Iron supplements help support an increase in blood volume. And folic acid intake is required for DNA synthesis as well as red blood cell production. When it comes to breastfeeding, we want to encourage protein intake, calcium, as well as vitamins A, B and C for the breastfeeding mother. We also want to promote adequate intake of fluids, consumption of an additional 500 calories per day to support adequate production of breast milk, and avoid any alcohol, caffeine, or drugs as they can be absorbed into the breast milk. And lastly, we're going to take a look at our older adult population. So energy needs are going to decrease due to that slowing of the metabolic rate. Age-related changes that affect nutrition include changes in teeth and saliva production, so reduced taste and smell, decreased thirst sensation, as well as a decreased gag reflex. We want to ensure adequate calcium as well as vitamin D intake to prevent osteoporosis. So a hot topic when it comes to growth and development is the increased need of minerals. Where do we get all of this mineral intake? Well, when it comes to calcium, you can find that in cheese, collard greens, milk and soy milk, rhubarb, sardines, tofu and yogurt. Chloride, we get that primarily from salt. And when it comes to iron, we're gonna be looking at breads and cereals, dark green vegetables, dried fruits, egg yolks, legumes, liver and meats. Magnesium is another important mineral that we get from almonds, avocados, canned white tuna, cauliflower, cooked rolled oats, green leafy vegetables, milk, peanut butter, peas, pork, beef, and chicken, potatoes, raisins, soybeans, as well as yogurt. When it comes to our phosphorus mineral, we get that from our dairy products, fish, nuts, pumpkin is a big one, 
organ meats, pork, beef, and chicken, squash, and whole grain breads and cereals. Zinc we primarily get from eggs, leafy vegetables, meats, and protein-rich foods. Our last two minerals that we keep a very close eye on is our potassium as well as our sodium. When it comes to potassium-rich foods, that's our avocado, bananas, cantaloupe, carrots, fish, mushrooms, oranges, of course, pork, beef, and veal, potatoes, raisins, spinach, strawberries, and tomatoes. When it comes to our sodium-rich food, we're looking at bacon, butter, canned foods, cheese, cured pork, hot dogs, ketchup, lunch meats, milk, mustard, of course our processed foods, snack foods like we talked about before, soy sauce, table salt, and white and whole wheat breads. We really need to make sure that we keep a close eye on these because any big imbalances when it comes to these two particular minerals can cause a lot of damage when it comes to our patient's health. I hope that this video is helpful for you in understanding the nutritional needs for growth and development. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure that you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube and hit that bell notification to be notified anytime I post a new video. Head on over to nursechung.com where there's additional resources to help you pass your skills exams as well as your NCLEX. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye!